In 3D Coat 4.1, you have an important new addition to the e-panel here in the upper left-hand portion of your interface. All the way to the right, you'll see it right next to its sibling, and that is the closed spline. They operate in a very similar fashion, except that the 3D spline uses ray casting as opposed to camera projection with the closed spline. And the closed spline usually works pretty well in most cases. Let me hit escape here to switch and start with the closed spline first. It's when you need to wrap a selection around the model that this camera projection becomes problematic. I'll hit escape to drop the spline and then control D to drop the selection. I'll try this again. I'm not going to worry about hardening any points. I'll just go ahead and do this for demonstration purposes. Now double click and you can see it has a real problem with that. Let me undo and get the spline back. So let's try at a different vantage point and it still has issues. So what I would do typically is I would split it up if I wanted to make this kind of selection. I would make one selection from the front then go back and make another selection from the back and these selections are additive. But again, that can be a little bit more tedious and hard to do than what you can now do with 3D spline. Let's now go ahead and try the 3D spline. I want to point out if you already had something created, you'll notice that when you click on the 3D spline option, it removes it. But you can always hit Control Z until you get your spline back. Okay, so I don't have to create this all over again if I don't want. So let's give us a try now. Hit enter. And if you get some kind of an issue here, a lot of times it's because this point, if it's not closed up well enough, sometimes you may have some overspray here just outside the beginning and the end of this spline. So I'm going to escape and create a new one. If you haven't seen how these splines work previously, you have three different types of points. Let me illustrate that with the regular close spline. So you can click. Let me create just a few here and I'll hit escape. This is a regular spline. You can see the point is on the curve itself and there is a certain measure of curvature. But if I right click, the next type of point is sharp or hard edge. If I right click again, it cycles to the next point and the third, and that is B splines. And you can see this is weighted. You can even see a real thin helper line here. All right. Sometimes this is what you want, sometimes not. And 3D Coat allows you to work with any combination of these points as you're working. So let me go ahead and hit escape here. And you can right click over the point either as you're creating the spline or after you finish the spline. You can go back and always change it. You also have edit points table here as well. After I've created a point, if I know for sure I want it to be a hard point, I'll just come back and right click before I move on. Hard point here, so I'll click, right click, right click, I'll right click here again. Right click to make that a hard point. Same thing here. Now just get close. 
So again, this is a regular spline, but I can change it. I'll undo, and it, it switches me over to a 3D spline. So I'm going to click there and hit Escape, and I can make a second selection if I like. I'm going to right click to harden that one. Right click to harden that one again. And if you've ever used the curves tool in uh, the voxel room here, you might notice a similarity here in the way this is laid down. It's almost identical uh, in its look, except it's much smaller. I'm going to right click twice to make that a B spline so it hugs that contour a bit better. And when you hover over a point and it's highlighted, then you can click on it and drag to reposition it. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit the Enter key or Apply here in your little toggle. And let's go ahead and save this. We can save it either here or here. And this will allow us to get back to it if we want. So I'm going to actually hit Control D to clear the selection. I still have my spline in place, but if I want symmetry, I probably want to keep this on this side of the symmetry plane. If you want to delete a point, you can just hover over it and hit the delete key. I'm just a little concerned with those sticking below the surface of the model so I just added another point you can just click anywhere inside the spline just trying to clean this up just a bit before you proceed okay we're close enough I suppose Again, I'll save. All right. Again, I'll hit the Enter key. Looks good. And so I can hit Escape. And I have my, essentially, a freeze selection. Now, I've got the freeze tool chosen, but this works regardless of the tool that you're using. If you're in Subdivide, Angulator, smoother as well as the Vox Extrude and Vox Layer. Now I should note up front that Subdivide, Angulator and Smoother and even the Freeze tool they operate by selection but they're only available in surface mode so if you want to use these tools in conjunction with this 3D spline you certainly want to go ahead and switch first. Okay. Now the Vox Layer and Vox Extrude operate in both modes so if you want to use this it really doesn't matter which mode you're in okay so let's try Vox layer and we just see a green outline of the shape if you have clothing or something like that where you want it to be set off of the original object by a certain distance you want to adjust that here okay I've got point one so it's just barely sitting right on top of the surface object and then the thickness will determine, obviously, uh, as the name implies, how thick this object will be. 
So I want to voxelize this because when a smooth, it typically will be a, a smoother object. In this case, that's what I want. So hit apply. And go to the bottom and hit smooth all. You'll notice it created a new layer for me and it placed this new object in that new layer. Now, if you don't like the result and you hit undo, it's not going to undo this layer. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes it can throw you off a little bit when you're trying to reattempt this. You might think, well, what's going on? What's, why can't I see anything? And that's because 3D Coat leaves you with this you know, layer chosen. So you want to go back to the original if you want to make another attempt. Okay, so yeah, I can just smooth all and, what, uh, and I can just continue to build if I'm working on something like a uh, robot or maybe just arm, you know, a sci-fi arm or something like that. So uh, one last thing I want to point out is that this is really not designed as of this recording to work in a paint room. However, anytime you create a selection in the voxel room, if you want to paint on the voxel model, okay, you can go to the uh, paint room here. I'm going to create a new layer in the layer panel. And in a vox tree layer panel, I'm going to hide this object we just created. So, yeah, with this upper torso, this area that's selected, this is seen by 3D Coat as a freeze selection. Okay, so if you wanted to use it for freezing purposes, that's great. But in this case, we want to actually fill this area. I'm going to hide all these other voxel objects here by holding the Alt key and clicking on the visibility icon of this object. And so now what I'm going to do is invert the selection just as I would in Photoshop. And you can do the same thing here under Freeze, Invert Free Selection. Okay, so in Photoshop to do that you would hit Control Shift I. It works the same way here. I can brush paint in this area or I could fill the entire thing. I could use the fill bucket tool, whatever. Let's just use one of these selection types here. Freeform lasso is fine. And if I want to paint all the way through, I want to make sure ignore back faces is unchecked. And so now I can just drag select and voila. I have my painted selection. Okay. Now Hopefully Andrew will enable this 3D spline to work in a paint room directly as well. If that does occur, we'll leave some type of an edit in the comment section below. So keep an eye out for that. Alright, so that should bring this tutorial to a conclusion. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.